joining us now, someone who was inside the room at the meeting, the number two House Republican, the incoming majority leader, Eric Cantor of Virginia. Congressman, thanks very much for joining us. Wolf, good to be with you. The president says it was a, a good meeting. Uh, tell us what was so good about it. Take us inside. Uh, Wolf, I, I do think it was a good meeting. I think perhaps it may be a positive start uh, after what I believe is an historic election. Uh, there was recognition on both sides that what the people of this country want is to see Washington to begin working for the public again uh, and to produce results. And we do have, as Republicans, a golden opportunity to sort of reset the direction in which we're heading and make it towards one of opportunity, was, responsibility, and success. What was, so the most I, I'm encouraged. Encouraged. what was the most encouraging thing you heard from the president today? Well, Wolf, where, where most people, I believe, are is they want to see the economy start again so that more people can get back to work. Uh, and what we've always said is that no one should suffer a tax hike right now while we have near 10 percent unemployment. And what I heard today on the part of the president was a recognition that this is a tough economy and that we have now, uh, at his request, put in place a process by which perhaps we can see a way forward to ensure that no one gets a tax increase this year. Are you ready to compromise on that issue, allow all the Bush era tax rates to continue, including for the wealthy, uh, for let's say two years? Uh, you know, Wolf, there's been no negotiation as far as uh, offers being put on the table, so I don't want to sit here and negotiate against no one, but I would say that what came out of the meeting today uh, was an indication, at least from what I took from the meeting, that this president and his team want to work with us. The president admitted that perhaps he wasn't as forthright in terms of wanting to reach out to us over the last two years and that maybe we can begin anew and really deliver some results for the American people. First and foremost, let's get the uncertainty out of the way as far as these tax rates are concerned so people can get back to work. Now, you want to go back, you want to cut spe government spending, reduce the size of government. You want to go back to the spending levels of 2008. Is that right? Uh, it is true. And, and uh, yesterday, just yesterday, the president himself uh, took one of our ideas that we have talked about since last May, and that is to begin uh, to reduce the size of the federal bureaucracy by freezing uh, pay to federal workers. Uh, we all know that the pay scales in the federal government far exceed those in the private sector. Uh, we and I think that that is something that we were looking for, is this president said, yes, I will join you in trying to cut the spending and the deficit in this town. Uh, so we all have to work together. And when you see a Republican majority uh, come January, it is our intention to try and bring down discretionary spending to 08 levels, and that will produce a saving of $100 billion in the first year alone so, for taxpayers. So you're not including the Defense Department? Uh, the, 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 in my opinion, Wolf, everything should be on the table. I don't if you think go back to the 2008 Defense Department spending, that's about $100 billion less than what the Defense Department is currently spending. Uh, I, I don't think, Wolf, that anyone uh, can defend every dollar and cent that the Pentagon is spending. We're going to have to prioritize. Make no mistake about it, a Republican majority is going to be a pro-defense and strong national security majority. But we're also very concerned about doing more with less. And I think because of that, everything will be on the table. What do you say to those 2 million Americans who are about to lose their unemployment benefits uh, after 99 weeks? Uh, and they're about to, to go cold turkey, if you will, and they're not going to get any more help. You know, Republicans have never been opposed to giving more uh, help to those who need it. Uh, we believe in a safety net for those who need it. Uh, we do not, however, support the continued extension of benefits uh, without having some ability to pay for them. You know, this goes back to sort of what I believe was the message out of November 2nd election, Wolf, and that is we've got to stop spending money we don't have. So we have proposed again and again as Republicans uh, ways to pay for uh, benefits to those who need them uh, without some trickery and budgeting, but actually to begin to prioritize. And if we're going to help those in need of help, uh, we've got to pay for it. 
Uh, the uh, gays uh, serving openly in the U.S. military is an important issue. Today, the Pentagon, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the defense secretary said uh, they can do it without serious problems in terms of military morale, cohesiveness, unity. Uh, the American people seem to agree. If you look at the polls, you look at the survey of active duty military personnel as well. Are you ready to pass legislation that will repeal the don't ask, don't tell policy? You know, Wolf, the three things that matter to me, and that is readiness, retention, and recruitment as far as our armed services are concerned. And I, I, t I for one, need to take a look at the study uh, which is uh, underway or been produced at the Pentagon uh, to see what kind of impact uh, that a policy like that really has on those three things. But let's look at the broader picture right now. This election that we've just gone through in this country was very much about people's economic situation uh, and the fact they want us to put a priority on the economy and getting people back to work, and that is having the environment in which more jobs can be created in the private sector. That's what the focus of the meeting at the White House was today. It was all about jobs and the economy first, and hopefully that's how we can end the year, is taking care of what I believe is one of the biggest uncertainties for facing the economy right now, which is the possible tax hikes that everyone is facing come January 1 if we don't act. We're out of time, but, uh, but do I hear you say, uh, you're saying that you have an open mind on this issue, don't ask, don't tell? Well, Wolf, this has always been a question of how that policy will impact recruitment, readiness, and retention as far as our armed services are concerned. Uh, and uh, not having had the opportunity to look at that study uh, to determine the impact of Don't Ask, Don't Tell on those three items, I'm not ready to tell you uh, that, that, yes, we would uh, take a look at it or not. Again, this has to do with our national security. All right, I'll, I'll take that as a yes. I have an open mind. I want to do some more study <laughs> on that, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, Congressman, congratulations. Once again, on your, your victory, uh, good luck in the leadership post. Thank you, Wolf. Eric Cantor, Republican of Virginia.